Our members walk diverse paths to find meaning and purpose, but we are united by our belief in the inherent worth and dignity of all and by the responsibility to express our faith through acts of justice and compassion. My name is Molly Stith, and I have been an active member of this UU Fellowship since 2013. Laurie Walker, a local Davisonian, is going to give us her approach on health and wellness. She is passionate about sharing whole health approach to aging wisdom with aging wisdom and resilience. She currently leads a weekly wise aging circle that explores the spirituality of aging. When she's not busy teaching mindful meditation or yoga, she's exploring the Blue Ridge Mountains with her husband, Scott, and her dog, Sadie. We look forward to her message today and her reflection about the month to redefine love. We begin every service with a chalice lighting. Please join me and say the chalice lighting words as written in your order of service as I light the chalice. symbol of warmth and freedom, we light this chalice as a symbol of our faith. Here we gather to celebrate hope and the infinite possibilities of love. I now invite Lauren Walker, our guest speaker, to provide our opening words. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good afternoon, thank you. All right, I stand corrected. It is three o'clock. So my opening words come from Sharon Salzberg, a respected uh, meditation teacher. <clears throat> I believe that, that there is only one kind of love, real love, trying to come alive in us despite our limiting assumptions the distortions of our culture, and the habits of fear, self-condemnation, -condemn and isolation that we tend to acquire just by living a life. All of us have the capacity to experience real love. When we see love from an expanded perspective, we can find it in the smallest moments of connection with a pet, with the child, with the person at the grocery store, anywhere. Will you please center us, Mike? I'll send it you. <laughs> Try that. <laughs> Thank you. 
this beautiful night. Beautiful. When I was in grade school, Valentine's Day was a big deal. <laughs> My mom would buy a box of assorted Valentine's cards, and I would carefully select a Valentine card from the box for each person in my class. Anybody do that? I would write their name, my name on the back, and address it with their name on the front, usually just first name, but we had two Andreas once and we had to put Andrea S and Andrea M. So, <clears throat> but out of the box, there were two big cards, bigger than all the other small ones, less significant ones. And I always gave those two biggest cards to my two favorite boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> one's name, I still remember, Huck. Huckleberry was his name. <laughs> Who does that? And, uh, and Mark. <laughs> so, yeah, it started early. In high school, Valentine's Day was still a pretty big deal. Girls would prance around with a flower from their sweetheart from class to class, careful to show it off as much as possible. <laughs> but not everybody got a card or a flower. So you were either loved or you were not loved. As mature human beings, we naturally live our lives wanting, belonging, connection, a home in this world. We yearn for warmth, for possibility, for more abundant life that love seems to promise. We have an intuition that we can't can connect much more deeply to ourselves <clears throat> and to one another, and we desire a quality of real love that is beyond that narrow, she loves me, she loves me not. Check one, yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> this month of February is the month where we celebrate love. In this month of love, it couldn't be a better time to redefine love's definition to one that is more inclusive. It's time to redefine love. We need to make a radical shift in our thinking from love as we know it or knew it <clears throat> to the everyday possibilities of what real love is. So what is real love? Real love is recognizing and honoring the light within every living being. The light of the soul that shines. This upgraded version of love is different from love, that, the love that we grew up with. <clears throat> its meaning isn't reflected in the typical love songs like the one we're gonna sing at the end of this service or even in the love that we may feel for our partner, our pet, or friends or family members. This new definition captures the meaning of love as your body experiences it. You know what it's like, what it feels like to be in love. And our body experiences it through connections with each other. We have to the capacity to experience this type of real love despite the hindrances and warps of our culture and the media that bombards us. One of the most rewarding spiritual practices is to cultivate the ability to bring love into all aspects of our life and to all people we encounter, even those with whom we are in conflict. It begins by just having the intention to do so. One way to do this is through a practice that you may have heard of called loving kindness meditation. Have you heard of that? So it's a very simple meditation. And even though it seems so simple, it really is a powerful way to set an intention for love. 
Each time, with, as with all meditations or spiritual practices, each time you practice, it's significant because that feeling that it gives you grows stronger and becomes more of a habit than a practice. It's another drop in the good bucket. And as the Buddha says, with dripping drops of water, the water jug is filled. So each time you practice, you are setting loving kindness meditation, you are setting a tone or a mindset of expressing real love in all aspects of your everyday life and with all people you encounter. Exercising real love is an ability that can grow even stronger, even in love for yourself. So a loving kindness meditation meditation always starts with you. So if you've ever done one, you know, you say, um, may I be happy, may I be well, may I be at peace, so on and so forth. And if it's your first time or you haven't practiced it very often, kind of feels kind of weird to wish yourself well, because we're just not used to doing that. And I thought that I would read this poem by, um, you know, I have to put a poem in on my reflections. <laughs> There's a poet, Derek Walcott. He was a Caribbean poet and a playwright. And uh, he wrote a poem called Love After Love. And it's, you know, I always say this when I read a poem. If I read it, I like it, obviously. But it is one of my favorite poems. The time will come when, with elation, you will greet yourself arriving at your own door. The time will come with, when, with elation, you will greet yourself arriving at your own door, in your own mirror, and each will smile at the other's welcome. So, at at your own door, in your own mirror, and each will smile at the other's welcome and say, sit here, eat. You will love again the stranger who was yourself. Give wine, give bread, give back your heart to itself, to the stranger who loved you, who has loved you all your life. So give back your heart to itself, to the stranger who has loved you all your life, whom you ignored for another, who knows you by heart. Take down the love letters from the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes. Peel your own image from the mirror. Sit, feast on your life. So loving kindness meditation helps us strengthen our ability to express real love. Now, I want to tell you that science actually supports this. So, you know, I'm sure you've heard at some point that they've done lots of studies on the brains of monks who spend all day meditating. Well, they did a study on uh, monks who were doing the loving kindness meditation. And there was actually, I don't know that, how they could measure this in monks because they're already <laughs> empathetic, but they say that there was an increase in empathy in, in these monks' brains. So I guess it stands to reason that for us, if we continue to practice loving kindness meditation, that will make us more empathetic. It will help us see out of the eyes or out of the sea, out of the eyes of love toward all those people that you come in relationship with, even if it's at the grocery store with the person who's checking you out and the wider community. It's about treating each person as the same, all connected to you and your love. To think differently that we're not connected is to deny the fact that we are, we cannot do anything that doesn't influence some other living being, period. 
A traditional loving kindness meditation starts with self-love. So too often, though, we judge ourselves so unworthy of love. And we judge ourselves sometimes based on the love that we get or the love that we give. Like those Valentine's cards or roses, right? I didn't get one. I'm not lovable. So if it helps, think of loving yourself as holding yourself accountable to be the best you can be in your life. That's what it means to love yourself, to hold yourself accountable to being the best you can be in your life. Love is a connection of action. It's a verb, not a noun. I love the quote by author and surgeon Atul Gawande. He wrote, um, what is that book that he wrote pretty Being recently? Mortal. Being Mortal. Um, anyway, Atul Gawande wrote, we are social, not just in the trivial sense that we like company and not just in the obvious sense that we depend on others. We are social in a more elemental way simply to exist as norm, as a normal human being requires interaction with other people, period. And I do a lot of work with the aging population and he's written a lot about aging and the lack of connection is horrific for any age and especially for those who are aging. So we need connection. Within us, there's a capacity to care about ourselves and others and want them to be well. So build a home inside by accepting yourself and learning to love and heal yourself. I challenge you to learn how to practice mindfulness in such a way that you can create moments of happiness and joy for your own nourishment then you have something to offer another person. So we're going to end with a loving kindness meditation towards ourselves. I think it's a good place to start. So Thich Nhat Hanh wrote, Eddie agrees. Thich Nhat Hanh wrote, the essence of loving kindness, I have to get Thich Nhat Hanh in every reflection yeah. about- He'd be disappointed if he did Yes, he would. <laughs> Um, the essence of loving kindness, he says, is being able to offer happiness. I love the way he puts things in such simplistic terms. You could be the sunshine for another person. You cannot offer happiness until you've had it for yourself. So build a home inside by, <laughs> by accepting yourself and learning to love and heal yourself. Learn how to practice mindfulness in such a way that you can create moments of happiness and joy for your own nourishment. Then you have something to offer someone else. So here we go. Loving kindness meditation. There is, um, there, this is not a practice where we're striving. This is a practice where we just sit, get comfortable in your seat if you want to, wiggle a little bit put down the stuff in your hands and we're not going to make anything. Well, we might make something special happen, but I want you to just feel physically comfortable as much as you can in these chairs. At least there's some padding, right? So get in touch with this natural space that we're in. Lift and release your heels, kind of bop your heels a couple times. And then press your feet into the floor like, boom, I am here, right here, right now. You can close your eyes if you want, but you don't have to. If your eyes are closed and you start to feel real sleepy, guess what? <laughs> Open them <laughs> and continue with the practice. <laughs> Once your posture is established, and by posture, have your spine as tall as it can be, whatever that is in your body. And then I want you to just begin by, this is a stretch I know at the beginning, actively taking delight in your own goodness. Yeah, what's that mean? 
So, so much of our time in our head is spent on self-shaming, regret, negative things, mistakes we made. But here's where we get a chance to say, you know what? I did this. I helped build that fence. And that was good. That was good. It may be... So that's a big thing, but it may be a small thing. Whatever it is that you help somebody carry something, whatever it is, think of a good quality that is alive in you, that is alive in you. So we don't do this to be egotistical or conceited, but to rejoice in the potential goodness that everybody has. And then we'll silently repeat phrases that reflect what we would wish most deeply for ourselves. So I'm going to give you the phrases and um, to, just for the, our sake this afternoon. But I want to say that you could make up a phrase like, may I have a great year would be something like that. But it's some typical of uh, phrases traditional are, may I live in safety? So s repeat that just silently to yourself. May I live in safety? So that means may I be safe, which relates to everybody's basic desire and need for security and protection from harm. The next one, I'll say, and then you could repeat to yourself, may I have mental happiness? Or you could say, may I have emotional happiness? Which refers to peace and joy in our minds. And then, may I have physical happiness? Which means health and freedom from pain. May I have physical happiness. And then, may I live with ease. May I live with ease. Meaning, may the elements of daily life, whatever it is for you, work, family, relationship, go easily and not be such a struggle. So I'm going to repeat these one more time with the pause in between and without a description to have more of a rhythm. May I be safe. May I have mental happiness. May I have physical happiness. May I live with ease. May I be safe. May I have mental happiness. May I have physical happiness. And may I live with ease. And then I'm just going to pause. If you practice this at home and you find your energy <clears throat> and attention starting to wander, there's no worries. You can start over using the phrases you've chosen. Now I'm going to switch gears just a little bit. I'd like to imagine yourself sitting like right in the center of this room and all the other people are surrounding you. So you're sitting in the middle of the room and you are circled by loving beings, the people in this room. So you're sitting in a circle of love energy and there you are in the center. And I want you to see what it feels like to be the experience, the recipient of that quality of attention, imagining that people in this room are saying these words to you. May you be safe. May you be safe. 
May you have mental happiness, peace, and joy. May you have physical happiness. And may you live with ease. So again, from your brothers and sisters in here, may you be safe. May you be safe. May you feel peace and joy. May you feel well in your body. May you live with, with ease. So um, emotions may arise when you do this. You may feel joyful. You may feel grateful. You might even feel embarrassed, like you just want to duck down and not have people give loving kindness to you. <laughs> but whatever it is, whatever you're feeling, as you practice, you could just Thoughts are not things. Just let it go. And then may we all live with ease. So to close this session, we're going to end this visualization, dissolve our circle. And uh, I'm going to close our service with these words. We all yearn for connection yet often feel stuck by our anger or other forms of aversion. And often that happens, you know, as our political season gets riled up. The media of our culture spins stories and assumptions around in our heads, are reeling, we feel alienated from one another. We need another way of knowing and being. We need another way. And I, I humbly suggest that this is a practice that you could offer. Here's where I use it most. When I watch the news and see people suffering due to no cause of their own from war, from all kinds of catastrophes, and I feel helpless and sad, I turn to this meditation. If I have nothing that I can actually give or any power to make grand change, I can offer my attention, my energy to whomever needs it. The world needs us. May we all practice some loving kindness meditation. Let's become authors of brand new stories about love. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs>
invite the public to. Um, you could go on Davidson College website, I'm sure, and find out about it. Yeah, and of course, you're always welcome to come and meditate with me on Tuesday mornings on Zoom. It's free. We have a group that, that meets. On Zoom, 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 a Zoom. Yep. Yeah. So anybody uh, pass out Valentine's cards in the third and fourth grade? <laughs> yes. Do you remember the name of your girlfriend or boyfriend? <laughs> what about the teachers? When you started describing which cards you gave away, I'm like, I thought you were going to say your favorite teacher. Oh, you said no. your favorite boyfriend. <laughs> hey, I, do, I will always remember my third grade teacher's name, Mrs. Roll. I loved her. A lot of people like their, either the third grade or fourth grade teacher. Second grade, yeah. No, none of them. I was my own fourth looking back. Yeah. Oh, have loving kindness, Eddie. Oh, no, we have loving kindness every day with our granddaughters, great granddaughters. Yeah. We show it and we feel it. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that feeling in your body. And, you know, there are, there are these connections. I call them, I used to call them, well, I'll still do them, namaste connections, where you just see the soul in somebody else. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, it can happen anywhere. If somebody just does a random, really nice thing for you. Um, the other day, I took my mom to the grocery store, and... She, her ability to walk now is so bad that I have to go and get a grocery cart for her and bring it to her because the cane and walk-in is just a lot of work for her. And, of course, she could use her role later, but she doesn't want to. <laughs> so grocery cart. Anyway, so um, coming back out of the grocery store, I had the grocery cart and I was close enough where I just had to wheel it all the way in because it was closer than the grocery cart thing in the, in the parking lot. So I started about to return it and somebody came right up to me. Let me return that for you. And then something happened like at the next store I went to, like, I don't know, you go ahead of me or something like that. And, you know, that's not love, but that's just this feeling of love, like just connection to a fellow human being. Anybody had something like that happen to him recently? Just like a random gesture of love? Yeah. What? Um. I was going to have, I, I had a tire that needed air. And uh, my son had showed me how to do that, but I couldn't remember. So I went on YouTube and looked at some videos. Then I went to the gas station. I'm in front of the air thing. I guess you call it a pump. <laughs> <laughs> Park my car. Have my little gauge that I can't even see. And at the, right after I parked my car, there are two gentlemen with a big truck that park right there. And I say, uh, please, uh, gentlemen, go ahead. I'm going to be so slow. I don't know how to do this. So please go ahead. And they said, no, ma'am, go ahead. There was an older man and a younger man. And they were obviously workers. And they, they just, you know, as I asked, as I was doing things and asked them, they told me what to do. They did not overpower me and said, well, let me do it. They yeah. just coached me through it. Wow. And I thought that was so kind, so kind. And it really touched me, made yeah. my day. Yeah. yeah. And that makes us all feel good to hear that, right? Because I thought you were going to say, well, they just did it for me. Because <laughs> that's what they really wanted to do. I don't think they're anywhere. No. <laughs> Anybody else? I, uh, one of my oldest friends um, that I've known since I was a teenager, or about 14 or so, she had to come down to. <laughs> she had to come down to um, Charlotte with one of her sons who needed heart surgery. And um, she lives in Lake Junaluska, and uh, he lives in Waynesville, and they have 
she's lived in uh, Haywood County ever since you know we left high school. So one thing she is not good about is traffic, and she's very nervous anyway. Um, and you know this is a second heart surgery that he's had to have. So I said, well, let me text me where you are in the hospital campus on Atrium, and I'll I'll drive into town and I'll meet you. So uh, she let me know where she was, and turns out she gave me the wrong building. But anyway, I got to the atrium campus uptown, and uh, uh, the parking deck that was the only one that was available for visitors, I started driving around level two, level three, level four, level five, nothing anywhere, level two, level three. So I probably went through all the levels uh, maybe four or five times, and I'm driving along thinking I'm going to have to. I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't park in this deck. I'll have to go somewhere else. And a woman was walking along, and uh, she, beside my car, because, you know, you have to drive slowly through the decks, and she kind of waved me down, and I rolled down my window, and she said, um, I am just getting ready to leave. She said, if you will follow me down to my car, it's the last one on this end, and I will not move my car until I see you drive up. So I said, well, thank you. So, so she walked on down to her car, and I followed along. She got in her car. and By that time, there were two other people waiting, thinking they are going to get in there. But she coordinated it so well, she slowly pulled out. And when she was about halfway out, I started to pull in. <laughs> and, I got the, yes, and I got the last parking place uh, in that deck. And uh, she just did that. I guess she'd seen me driving around, but um, uh, I thought it was a really nice thing for her to do, you know, or else I'd still be lost yeah, still in the, be still around. be driving around at Atrium. <laughs> that was a very nice thing. I have no idea who she was, but she, her tag was from South Carolina, but she maneuvered it so nicely. <laughs> so that, <laughs> Well, thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Um, appreciate you. your good stories. One more. Oh, one more. I just want to thank you, Lori, for refreshing our memories on all the ways that we can uh, build peace in our lives and have more satisfaction. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Lori, for reminding us that love is a verb and it's not just the noun. We are human beings. We are not human doings. So take some time and just be. Mike? Mike? Can you get a key from Monica in that satchel? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Hey, harmonica players travel light. <laughs> little bag. <laughs> Smart. Smart. <laughs> He's Dina drummer. Yeah. It's a James Taylor song. You can't play the game. You can't act out the part. But you know it wasn't written for you. Tell me how can you stand with your broken heart Afraid of playing a fool One thing can lead to another You won't take any sacrifice Oh, father and mother, sister and brother If it feels nice, don't think twice Just shower the people you love with Show them the way that you feel Things are gonna work out fine If you only will Do as I say Shower the people you love with Show them the way that you feel Things are gonna turn out fine If you only will Now you can run, but you cannot hide. This is widely known. Tell me what you plan to do with your foolish pride when you're all by yourself alone. First, you 
tell somebody the way that you feel, you'll see it beginning to ease. I think it's true what they say about the squeaky wheel. It's always getting a breeze. Better to shower the people you love with love. Show them the way that you feel. Things are gonna turn out fine if you only will. What I like to do to you is shower the people you love with love. Show them the way that you feel. Things are gonna turn out fine if you only will. Shower the people you love with Show them the way that you feel Shower the people you love with Show them the way that you feel They say in every life you love with They say the rain must fall okay. But like a pouring rain Make it rain Make it rain, love, 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 sunshine, yeah, alright. Things are gonna work out fine if you only will. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Eddie. This fellowship is important to us all. The contributions that we make today allow us to sustain and grow our congregation to reach out to our community, both here and worldly. Your giving affirms your commitment, our commitment to each other and to the community. With grateful hearts, we receive these gifts. May and may encourage us to live lives full of warmth, compassion, and integrity. If you'll please open up the order of service, there are several announcements printed in the order of service. I will go over some of them. First of all, congratulations, yes, to the UU Animal Ministry. <laughs> it did take two weeks in the making because of the weather. Mother Nature was not on your side. But I'm excited that it sounds like the family will join you for the next build. That's wonderful. If you have any questions, reach out to Claudia and Alan after the service. Movie Tuesdays. We still meet on Tuesdays to view a movie at Birkdale. If you have questions about that, please reach out to Linda Heidenberg. Are we going somewhere for a social supper today? I think we're going to McAllister's. McAllister's? McAllister's off of exit 28 on Catawba Avenue. Our closing song today is a familiar tune. 
many of you will recognize. So please stand if you're willing and able. And if the spirit moves you, you can help Laurie and Mike sing Silly Love Songs by Paul McCartney. And the lyrics are on the back of the question. Uh, uh, my closing words. <laughs> Let's be the author of new stories of love. Go in peace and love. <laughs> At the end of our service, we extinguish the chalice. Please refer to your order of service and repeat the chalice extinguishing words. Chalice extinguishing words with me. I was hoping you'd just read it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 